Since I've been getting extremely high utility bills these days, I've decided to start upgrading some stuff and cut back on my power consumption. Um, in fact, in the middle of winter here in Michigan, uh, it's been extremely cold outside, and I, I've been getting utility bills uh, for the gas and electricity together. It's been totaling between $390 and $450 a month, and I need to start cutting back as much as possible. It seems like no matter how much I cut back, they just raise the rates again to compensate, so I always have to pay the same amount anyway. But I'm starting to outgrow some of my server hardware, and I figured this was as good a time as any to do uh, some upgrades and try to save some money in the process. Uh, I've got some new parts and some used parts that I'm going to be putting into this project. And the case isn't here yet, so hopefully that's going to be here uh, in time for me to get this done over the weekend but in the meantime I can't resist uh, unboxing this and trying it out. But take a look at what we have here uh, this 128 gig a Pacer industrial SSD got this off eBay for about 60 bucks it has less than one hour on the clock so it's pretty much a new drive. <clears throat> I've got four gigs of G-Skill DDR3 1066 SO DIMMs because this little motherboard uses uses smaller chips. Uh, a cheap light on DVD drive in case I need it for the server. Probably be doing most of my installs off USB anyways, but I figured there's no harm in putting an optical drive in there in case I need it. This USB 3.0 controller was something that they put in for free with my purchase, so I don't know if I'll find a use for it or not. It's not going to be going in this project. And I've got some different power supplies I want to test uh, for this as well to compare the wattage consumption. Uh, I've got this Acbell 550 watt workstation power supply. I've talked about these before. They're extremely heavy uh, commercial grade power supplies and it's extremely overkill for this project. But probably the most efficient power supply I have on hand right now. So I'm going to see how it performs. I've also got this little tiny... Uh, what they call a Pico power board. It's basically a miniature ATX power supply that you plug into the motherboard and it allows you to run off of a single 12 volt DC power source. <clears throat> I want to say this thing is only rated for oh, maybe 60 watts or so. Uh, I actually borrowed this from work so I'm not going to be using it in this project but I'm just going to be testing it to see how it compares as far as power consumption. Uh, I wouldn't want to leave something like this in a server anyways. I don't trust it to put out nearly as clean a power as something like that does. <clears throat> but um, oh yeah and if you're wondering about this fan here this isn't for this project this is actually going to go in my music computer. It's a little 60 millimeter uh, Noctua cooling fan. I really like these a lot. They're a little bit pricey but they come with plenty of accessories and they work very well and they're very quiet. Uh, now uh, let's take a closer look at this motherboard. This is the heart of the project. This ASRock server motherboard. I think it's the first time I've ever used an ASRock board in any of my builds. Normally I go with Gigabyte usually and I was had a very difficult decision making and buying this board. Uh, I almost went with a consumer grade gigabyte board that had much better specs and the same form factor and was probably half the cost of this board and it had uh, a Celeron 1037 which is much faster than the Atom CPU that's on here but the thing that ruined it for me was the consumer grade board had consumer grade Realtek LAN controllers on it, where this board has Intel server grade LAN controllers, which I would really prefer uh, for what I'm doing with this system. Um, and this is probably a little bit more power efficient, not by much. Uh, it's an Atom D2550 CPU, and it has a thermal design power of only 10 watts. So I'm hoping this thing is going to be extremely power efficient. And according to the benchmarks at Passmark.com, uh, this system actually was just slightly faster than my old dual Pentium 3 rig. And since the Pentium 3 is having no trouble in, in doing the job, this will probably be just fine and save a ton of power in the process. But this is a... We've got some SATA cables here. Lots of SATA cables. 
IO shield. Get this box out of the way. Yep, so first time I've worked with a actual server motherboard that is in the mini ITX form factor. Alright, now that I can see this a little better, you can see just how many ports are on this motherboard. Lots of SATA ports, uh, both 3 gig and 6 gig. A PCI Express X16 slot. It was another uh, another selling point of this board for me because the consumer board had a conventional 32-bit PCI slot, which wouldn't have enough bandwidth if I ever wanted to put another dual gigabit LAN controller in it or something. Uh, tons of USB ports, uh, eSATA port, HDMI, VGA, serial, PS2. Uh, we've got a trusted platform module header. I've never worked with one of those. I might have to try that someday. Uh, another header down here for front panel connections such as uh, the LAN activity LEDs, which I'm hoping to take advantage of that. Um, we also have a board mounted USB connector here, which uh, that would really be handy if you have a small memory stick to put in there and, and your OS is one of those types that just kind of loads into RAM. Uh, this would make a perfectly self-contained board for something like uh, maybe free NAS or NAS Lite or, you know, like I said, anything that loads into memory because most USB sticks don't like repeated write cycles. But depending on what I end up doing with this, I might give the USB stick a try because it would be great to save that SSD for another computer. I can think of a lot of uses I could have for that. And... Um, but I'm, I'm just kind of surprised at how many ports are on this little board. It's got all solid capacitors, which thankfully is becoming a lot more common on motherboards these days. The two RAM slots, a 24 pin power connector, and it does not have the 12 volt CPU power connector like, mo like uh, most larger motherboards have. It just doesn't need it. And I think this empty spot here in the corner is actually where the audio circuit would have been installed had this not been a server board. But obviously that's not needed for this, so they didn't put it on there. Alright, I decided to try the Pico PSU on there. And I'm not going to bother hooking up any drives. However, I plugged in a USB stick. I don't know if there's anything on this or not, so I'll find out. Um, Without any fans or anything, I can't really tell if this thing turns on. I guess I'll just have to watch the screen. But here we go. First power up. Is it going to do anything? Yes, it is. I see a signal. Sweet. See if my camera will focus. I am not used to the computer being absolutely dead silent like that. <laughs> That's kind of odd. Hmm. CPU is actually colder than the motherboard temperature sensor. Wow. Boot option. Hmm. It's already seeing that USB stick on there, so let me just go ahead and exit and see what this thing does. I'm curious what's on this USB stick, if anything. Ha! <laughs> it's got Puppy Linux on it. How how very appropriate for something like this. Man, I'm not used to this computer being so quiet. Eh, it just dropped out, didn't load. I wonder if this USB stick is messed up. I'll find something else to try. I was really hoping that would work though. Enough toying with the USB stuff. Let's try this SSD that already has Kubuntu Linux on it. See how this works out.
Hmm. That didn't take long. <laughs> And it's got to reconfigure all the hardware because I changed the uh, that SSD was installed in that shuttle mini PC uh, before, but it looks like it's loaded. Hmm. Wonder if this thing will play HD video. I need to find a something to put audio on this temporarily just so I can experiment with it. Well, I'm playing a 720p video off of YouTube and it's it's doing alright. It's breaking up here and there kinda of struggling but this is only the Intel GMA graphics under Linux so it's probably not the best thing to be doing this with. But what really pleases me the most is the fact that this thing is being pushed pretty hard and it's only pulling 28 watts far far better than uh, the full-size server could ever do. In fact I'm going to hook up the uh, the big power supply down there and see what that does. Eh, not too bad really. I got this massive power supply hooked up and it's only using between 35 and 37 watts. Not too bad. But if I had the money I would uh, pick up another power supply that's like an 80 plus platinum certified and a lot smaller than this because this is just way overkill. I'm going to use it because it was already here. Uh, I think that's about all I can do with this thing for now. I need to wait for the, the case to come in so I can finish the assembly. Well I've already had my first bit of bad luck with this board been trying to get clear OS installed and it's been rebooting at random I ended up trying a different power supply and it's made it farther than it did before but I don't understand why the power supply would have anything to do with it I know that power supply is good but hopefully um, that's not going to be an issue because this thing has to be stable and of course now my camera battery is saying it's about to die so I'm going to have to pause this I finally got the case now that it's the following Monday thanks to our lovely weather delaying the UPS truck uh, but this is a Norco RPC 231 2U rack mount case and I was uh, had a choice between this or the iStar USA case which had about the same specs and it was the same price but I'm really glad I went with the Norco because I have one of the iStar USA cases in my music system in the other room and I think this Norco is a much better build quality. It's got a quick release lever for the optical drive and the hard drive cages have rubber mounts on them and the metal, the metal and the standoffs are generally a lot better quality than what I had in the iStar case. And I went with the 2U size because I wanted it to be as small as possible and still be able to use a standard power supply. However, the mistake that I made in that respect was that it will not work with most modern power supplies like this that have the fan in the top. And this nice Rosewell capstone power supply that I got is not going to work because it won't get any airflow. So I'm stuck with the Acbell, which is just not the best thing for the job. I think all my other power supplies that have the fan in the back are, are much too old and much too inefficient and in too bad a shape. So I lost another 40 bucks on a power supply, but either way, I'm going to put this power supply in that computer over there because that has one of those Acbell power supplies and it's kind of unsuitable for that system too, plus it's a little too noisy. So maybe I'll take that one and put it in here and see if the problem persists then I'll know it was an issue with those Acbell power supplies in general and if the problem goes away then it was just maybe that particular power supply but you know seeing that that power supply was in my dad's computer working perfectly for a couple of years I don't see that being uh, any better 
But either way, I'm going to get this motherboard mounted because uh, that's the main thing I've been waiting to do. I'll worry about the power supply last. It looks like I might be saved after all. I remembered that my workshop home theater PC had this 400 watt Zippy Emacs server power supply in it. So I'll put the capstone in here, or maybe the Actel, one or the other, and take out the Zippy for the new server. So this system doesn't get a lot of use anyway, so no harm done. Yeah, not too much longer, and this old ProLiant's going to be uh, sitting around in the workshop. Not going to be using it too much longer, hopefully. This whole power supply situation is getting a little difficult. Huh, I went to put the Acbell power supply from my dad's computer in the home theater PC and then discovered that it was missing the 8-pin to 4-pin CPU power adapter, which that computer needs. However, my other workshop computer here that has the Acbell in it uh, has that adapter. So I'm going to take this power supply, put that in the home theater PC, take the Zippy, put it in the new server, and then take this capstone and put it in the workshop PC. And um, that'll get three problems taken care of simply by having this one new power supply. And hopefully this is all going to work out. Well, I found one thing that I definitely don't like about this case. This uh, retention mechanism that I thought was going to be so nice uh, isn't nice after all. There's no studs that go into the screw holes to hold the drive. So even when it's clamped, it's just like a friction fit and you can still slide the drive forward and backwards like it's not, you know, like, like nothing. So I'm going to have to try to find a workaround for that because that's really annoying. Okay, finally some progress. Maybe I can finish putting this together now. Only took me about an hour and a half to switch all these power supplies around. And, of course, once I got my home theater PC all back together, I found one of these um, spacers stuck to the power supply that I took out. And so I was wondering why the new one was, was uh, sitting in there a little funny before I put the screws in. So I'm going to have to put that back in another day. I'm running out of time. This is already a quarter after seven. At least that computer over there is ten times quieter now, so that's going to be nice. Uh, no more loud fans while we're trying to work down here. And I think this one, well this is my only choice left really, but um, I think it will actually work good for this system. At least I hope. Finally, I think I'm ready to power this thing up. That took forever. Luckily there's empty space in here from the motherboard being so small that I could tie that bundle of extra cables out of the way. They didn't quite fit underneath the, CD, the uh, DVD-ROM, so at least there was some place to put them that didn't block airflow. And hooking up the, <clears throat> the LAN LEDs was a little bit confusing because the, the manual... Boy, I don't know if I'm going to be able to focus on that, but... On these t four top right corner pins are the LAN LEDs, and it says link and active for each one. And I figured there'd be four LEDs all together, you know, and you'd go across those two pins on each one. But these pins down here are for something else. And I finally figured out that you can just put the LEDs across, you know, put each LED across the link and active pin, and it seems to work fine that way. But man, what a pain. All right, let's do this. Power and hard drive LEDs are working. Okay, good, ClearOS is installed. Am I gonna have network LEDs here? I wonder if they're just not on because, uh, <clears throat> hmm. All right. I'm not sure if that's going to work right or not. Yes, oh, it's blinking there. I don't know if it's uh, working correctly though. I'll find out in a minute. 
The thing I noticed with this case is they also had the wire colors backwards on the LEDs. They had the white wires as the positive. Usually it's the other way around. And I can hear the case fans gradually ramping up their speed. This thing is really quiet. It's a lot quieter than I expected. Makes my other server sound like a rocket. Okay, good. It looks like the <clears throat> the land activity LED is actually doing what it should be. There's no link light, but as long as I've got activity, uh, it's not a big deal. Yeah, so far I think my biggest gripe is just the optical drive mounts. That's uh, that's ridiculous. So the, really the only problems with this case was the optical drive mounts and the LED cables. And the, the USB cables were also kind of cumbersome because they had the ground wire as a separate connector housing. So it was kind of one of those separated pins where you got to put them on one at a time. But I tried to do cable management the best I could, but things got a little out of hand once I installed the power supply. It was, it was doing pretty good up until that point. Well, it's been almost a month now and I still haven't finished this thing. I ran the system for a little while to test it for stability and it seemed to be okay. Uh, however, I decided to pick up another power supply because this is more suited for like a file server and the system was using about 45 watts at idle with this power supply because it's pretty old technology. I picked up a more modern power supply. This is an Antec EA380D. 80 plus bronze certified. Got it for 27 bucks on eBay. It was pulled out of a new case and it was never actually hooked up to anything. So um, <clears throat> that should cut a few more watts off the power consumption and probably be a little bit better for a small system such as this. So I'm going to get this power supply swapped out and then next comes the mounting rails. Well that 80 plus is a nice advantage on smaller hardware like this after all. Because it took the power consumption from 45 watts down to 28 watts. If it was a, a larger system that was using a couple hundred watts, that wouldn't be a very big change. But, you know, percentage-wise, that's a pretty big drop. So, I'm satisfied. I got the rails installed on the side of the case. Those are Norco RL20 rails, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this case did not fit my universal rails that I had laying around, so I had to order these in, and I decided to get the power supply at the same time. But I think this thing is finally ready to get installed in the rack and put to use. I'm not looking forward to going out there and dismounting the old server and messing with the rest of the mounting brackets, but it's got to get done. Well, it's time to disconnect the old server, so... I gotta make sure everybody's done using the internet and shut this thing down. I wonder what's on the wireless. My cell phone, maybe? Hmm. Yeah, somebody's using the internet upstairs, too, so. Gotta make sure they're all finished and uh, we'll get on with this. Alright, the new rails are in place. It, it went a lot easier than I thought. I just hope that this all fits together. But you can see the rails are threaded. So they're sitting behind the front edge of the rack here. And these flathead screws are going through and threading into the, the rail bracket. And it's exactly the same on the back. The mounting brackets actually slide in or out to adjust for the length of the rack. Uh, so far I really like these rails. but. I read so many bad reviews on Newegg before I bought these that I was hesitant, but as long as the server fits in here, then I have no complaints whatsoever. That was one of the easiest rail mounts I've ever done. Well, I'm finally up and running. I ended up mounting the server directly to the rack because there was not enough width between the mounting rails to slide the server in. I'm not really sure why, because this is a standard size rack, but it's like the rails were too thick so maybe that's what people were talking about as far as things not fitting but it ain't the end of the world that server's not very heavy so 
I don't really need the rails. It just would have been really nice to, to have them, and it was a waste of $40, but um, at least I'm back online, and I can get on with the next project. What do you say we have a little bit of fun with the old server? This is a Compact ProLiant DL360 Generation 2. I actually got this from one of my subscribers a couple of years ago, and it sat around my workshop for a long time. And I finally got around to installing the second processor and some more RAM and put it to use, replacing my old Generation 1 DL360 that I was running since 2006. And, you know, I would have been running this, I would still be using it if it weren't for trying to cut back on my power consumption. In fact, I'm going to get this hooked up and see how many watts it draws uh, in comparison to the new system. Because I, I didn't know for sure. I know it's over 100 watts, but I don't know by how much. Here's a look at the inside. This has a pair of 1.4 gigahertz Pentium 3 processors. I think that was the fastest Pentium 3 that they made. It's uh, based on the Tuliton core. The heat sinks look different because I actually made this one out of an old Socket 7 heat sink or Socket 370, one of the two, I can't remember. I just cut the, the fins off the edges here to make it short enough to fit in here. Uh, I didn't want to buy the whole processor upgrade kit because it costed more than the server was worth. So I ended up buying the VRM for I think six bucks. The processor was five bucks and the heat sink like I said was laying around so it was like eleven dollars for me to add that second processor it's got 2.2 gigs of RAM and I want to say when I first got it it only had 256 megs in it and I added this this pair of one gig chips it's got this single large cooling fan or blower rather and it's a 24 volt blower it actually uses quite a bit of power too it makes a lot of noise and uh, there's a pair of 18.2 gig SCSI drives in here. I've got lots and lots of spares uh, in various different sizes for these systems. Um, so I'm probably going to pull these out and put in some, maybe some 74 gig drives that are a little bit newer uh, to mess around with this on the bench for a little bit. It's got a 200 watt power supply with active power factor correction, but it's definitely not 80 plus certified. It's too old for that. In fact, it's already using 25 watts, which is uh, about what my new server uses when it's running, so that's kind of sad. I wonder how much it's going to use when this thing's actually turned on. There's a 64 bit PCI slot. Actually, I think there's, yeah, there's two of them in here. Um, and it's obviously too old to have PCI Express. But let me put the uh, top cover back on this so I can have the proper airflow guide and we'll turn this thing on and see what we can do with it for a little bit. Here we go. Here's a pair of 72.8 gig 10,000 RPM drives. So that'll be enough to experiment with. We are ready for the power up. So we're sitting at 25 watts in standby. Let's see what this does when it's actually on. Well, we're at 140 watts without the hard drive spinning yet. I'm going to have to configure the hard drives because the controller is not set up, set up for these yet. At least I don't think it is. There might actually be something installed in these drives, I'm not sure. There's one. Here's the second one. We are at 160 watts. One logical drive, so it's already configured. Maybe this is another system I was experimenting with ClearOS on, or another uh, set of drives rather. Yeah, let's see what this has on it. 
Ah, input signal out of range. Oh well, let me see if I can uh, boot this off of uh, another disk and do an install. Actually, you know what, I'm going to wait and see if uh, this is going to start up and go into, into a desktop first here. He is definitely booting something. What do we got here? Hey. It's got Ubuntu on it. Probably an old version of Ubuntu. Well, that saves me a little bit of trouble with installing any OS to play around with. It's already ready to go. Plug in my LAN cable. All right. A hundred and seventy watts. So the new server has uh, hundred and fifty watts less power consumption. I wonder how old this Firefox is on here. Yeah, it's actually loading pretty quick for an old Pentium 3. YouTube. Will it work? <laughs> yeah, I just want to go right to YouTube. There we go. Find a random video here to play. See what it does. Definitely choppy. Eh, not too bad. It's actually attempting to play at least. I need to find something to get some audio because it's boring without sound. Dug through a box of junk and found this. A very cheesy USB sound card that looks like a vacuum tube. Let's unbox it and see if it works. This thing actually looks kind of cool. It's got a VIA VT1610 chipset in it looks like. It comes with this little angle adapter. Let me hook this thing up and see what it can do. So, it works! They have a pretty good DIY from money. It's about a thousand bucks to set one up on a mill. A lot cheaper than some of the bigger ones. So yeah, let's open it up. And these use an optical glass type um, scale. Unlike a vernier, which I think is inductance. Can't quite remember if they are or aren't. I'm waiting for a dead digital vernier to show up for uh, autopsy for that one. So yeah, it says fragile. Glass inside, do not drop. I mean, it looks like I've already dropped it. <laughs> the Fragility reference. You know what it's from if you ever watched a uh, yeah, certain cartoon in the Marvies. And yes, it would. I can't believe it even plays at all with the, uh, the CPU could probably do a pretty good job with video if it had a better video card, but it's just using the onboard ATI RAGE chipset that uh, pretty much any server of this era had in it. In fact, I think they're still using that chipset to this day in some systems. And I wish I had a, uh, a newer PCI video card that had some onboard acceleration that could really uh, do some stuff with this. Maybe even play HD video with it, but unfortunately I think the fastest card I have is a GeForce uh, FX 5500. I don't know if that's going to help. 
I want to listen to some music over this little USB sound card, but this thing makes so much noise, it's probably pointless to do. Well, it kind of works. I just can't hear anything over the doggone blower. Nifty little amplifier. I kind of like it. Wow, that little little sound chip actually works pretty doggone good. Even over the noise of the server, I can hear that that sounds good. Good stereo separation too. Of course the camera's not gonna pick that up worth a crap. What can I say? It works like a desktop for the most part when you've got a sound card plugged in and the uh, basic setup going. Hmm. I really wish I had a video card, doggone it. Maybe I'll have to pick one up off eBay and, and do another video about this later on. See, see if I can get this to play HD video. Nope. Yeah, definitely a big savings on electricity. It saved me 130 watts, approximately. So, uh, should add up after a while. This thing's crazy. Yeah, the camera picks it up and is like flickering and stuff, but. When I look at it in person, I don't see that flickering. It's just fading in and out from uh, dark to bright. Kind of a neat little little uh, gadget. But I think it's time to shut this thing down and get this video finished up because it's getting late. It's going to be much quieter in here in a couple seconds. Ah, quiet. I can still hear the fans running on the power supply in low speed for the standby, but man, <laughs> this thing sounds like a rocket ship compared to the new server.